we're going to set up this Angular app with um, Nginx and uh, make it publicly accessible using an EC2 server. Um, and so first thing we're going to do is launch an EC2 instance. Um, I like to use the default instance and um, T2 micro as the default um, size. And so we're going to click through all the configuration until we get to configure security group. Um, here, um, we'll want to add HTTP access to our EC2 instance because we want um, people to be able to access um, the Angular application over the web. And so in this case, um, we create a new security group um, called tutorial and then tutorial uh, tutorial to, to, to add the description. And then we simply just add a new rule for HTTP. It has built-in defaults. You can customize these for based on what you want, but I just go with the defaults here. Um, in this case, I've already created an existing security group matching um, those rules. So I'm just going to select it using um, ultra-side default. And you can see the rules pop up HTTP. All I did was add a HTTP type rule. And these are just defaults. So you go to review and launch. You can ignore this for now um, and then simply launch your instance. Um, you can create a new key pair, um, but I already have one, so I'm going to choose that one um, and then launch the instance. And so my key pair is located in this in, on my desktop um, within my project directory. So I'm going to navigate there really quick. And you can see the key pair file I've stored um, in there, um, ultrasite default.pem. I go to EC2. My instance is running now, and so I'm going to want to connect into that instance um, using my default, um, or using my um, key pair permission file. And so I just copy and paste this as long as I'm in the directory where this file is um, directly located, and type yes, and I'm in EC2, um, my virtual machine. And so the next thing we're going to want to do, um, first to show you guys, this is an empty um, EC2 virtual machine, um, printing out all the contents, um, or the created directories, and there are none. So the next thing we're going to want to do is um, go to our Angular application and um, get build files that we can copy over um, to EC2. So I'm going to do that using ng-build um, in VS Code. And just wait on this to build. All right, so build, and you can see this um, disk folder pop up um, with all our static files. And so um, we're going to want to actually copy that into EC2 um, using SCP. And so we can, all we really need to do is... Um, so basically, to break down this command, SCP is um, kind of like a shell copy, um, which uses um, SSH to copy over files from your local directory into um, the directory on your virtual machine. Um, and so this is um, my key, uh, my um, permission file and the path to my permission file. Um, this basically just says copy uh, copy this entire directory into the remote directory. And so my uh, build files are located um, at this path um, under the distribution folder or disk folder. And this asterisk just means copy all the files under this folder um, into this remote directory. Um, the one thing I'll have to replace is this because I have a new EC2 instance URL. And so let me actually copy that. And then we're going to want to um, tell where to copy it into um, with colon and then the directory. Here I'm just going to copy it into my home directory um, and run this command. And you can see it um, copying from my local into EC2. Um, and it's simply loading right now. I just wait for it to finish. And it's completed copying. And so if we ls in EC2, you can see this folder has popped up. And if we see to it and print out the contents, you can see that um, the contents match the contents in the build folder um, generated by VS Code. So um, we have our Angular app inside of um, EC2, but we have nothing to run it with. Um, um, for example, if you go back to EC2 um, and go to the um, public AP, or IP address, nothing comes up because nothing's being um, hosted right now. And so we're going to utilize um, Nginx to do that part for us. And so Nginx is basically like a web server, um, but it also has a lot of other built-in capabilities like reverse proxy that allow you to place your backend and front end um, on the same server and um, load balancing for larger projects. Um, in this case, I need to install Nginx into the EC2 machine um, using this command sudo amazon linux extras install Nginx1. And basically this is going to create a default Nginx setup for us, um, uh, which we can check out in a second. And so now that Nginx has finished installing, we're going to use Vim, which is um, like a terminal text editor, um, and go into the etc slash Nginx folder that was created for us, and specifically go into the configuration. And um, you can look, take a brief look at this configuration. This is all created for you by that command. And um, the key thing to focus on is that the port is at 80, um, and, and the root which is where the content is hosted, is um, user share nginx html, which is kind of um, a folder holding static files, just like the um, files we just uploaded to EC2. 
Um, and so whenever you start up the Nginx um, server, it's going to host these static files at the um, URL of the EC2 instance. So we're going to take a brief look at that really quick. Um, first, we can actually cd, uh, what was it, user share Nginx. And so you see this HTML folder. Um, go there. Oh, nice. And then the index.html is what's actually pulled um, in the server there. So um, we can take a look at it using nano index.html. And so basically, the title is going to be test page for Nginx HTTP server. Um, it's got this styling. Um, and then this is kind of what it's going to look like. Welcome to Nginx. This page is used to test, blah, blah, blah. So whatever's on this HTML file um, is whatever's going to be on our EC2 server um, public IP address. And so we're going to start the server using sudo systemctl start Nginx. And so this just booted up that Nginx server. We can check the status using, and it says started the Nginx HTTP and reverse proxy server. So if we actually go to the address of our EC2 instance and copy and paste it, um, you see last time before starting up the server, um, nothing shows up. This time, that default page shows up. So test page for Nginx HTTP server, um, and then this is the default index.html page. So now you can kind of see um, what we actually want on this page is the index.html of our Angular application, which will actually show um, all the um, information for our Angular app. And so what, what you need to do for that is navigate into the um, Nginx configuration file again. And the key change, um, which I like to separate the root from um, the server root, is um, so show that um, the default location or the root location of your HTTP server is going to serve up um, your the HTML file in your um, Angular project build. And so that's located, um, if you have a Linux uh, AMI at home, easy to user slash the name of that folder, um, add a semicolon, and then we're going to delete this. And so at the location root path, um, it's going to grab the index.html of our um, Angular project. So we exit that text editor, and then we um, reload the Nginx server, just reloading the contents, and then we restart it so that um, those updated contents are shown. But there's going to be a problem that you see um, at first. So let me navigate to EC2. And it'll probably say forbidden. Yeah. And this is because the um, files or one of the um, directories in um, the path that our Angular project is hosted on in EC2 is located on EC2. doesn't have the right permissions. So we can compare um, the permissions with um, the HTML file that Nginx was just working with using this command name I O M. And then the path was user next share dot HTML. And so you can see it's just a bunch of letters D R W X R dash xr dash x. This is just read, write, um, I think execute. I can't really remember, but we just want them to match. And so if we go to the path that our folder, our build files are located in, which is home slash ec2 user slash alter site, you can see most of these match, except this ec2 user folder um, doesn't have um, the right permissions. And so we can add them using um, chmod, which is basically used to change permissions of a file or directory, and then home ec2 user, then run again. And you can see the permissions have been um, updated. Um, so we reload again the web server and then we start the web server. And voila, the Angular project is now hosted on EC2 um, at this public API or IP address that anyone can address or can access. And so um, that's mainly it on Angular and Nginx.